can change your day in a matter of you know, a minute. You're having a bad day, stop what you're doing. Sit down for a second. Really take in what, what is affecting you and let it go. Let that sh- go. This is All Things Fitness and Wellness, hosted by Chrissy Van. Together, we're uniting industry thought leaders and fitfluencers on the mission to inspire innovation and encourage people to live a life fit and well. Brought to you by the British Columbia Personal Training Institute. Learn how to train, gain, and retain clients. Visit bcpti.ca. Are you ready to supercharge your energy? In this exciting episode, we have the pleasure of welcoming Mark Coronel of Energia Fitness. I had the pleasure of meeting Mark at Idea World this past July, and it quickly became evident that he's not only passionate about his work, but also exudes a contagious energy. Mark brings over two decades of experience in the fitness industry to the table, a career highlighted by numerous prestigious awards and collaborations with some of the most renowned brands. He shares his invaluable insights with fitness professionals worldwide as an educator, making a significant impact to the fitness industry. Throughout our conversation with Mark, he consistently provided food for thought, emphasizing that fitness goes beyond mere weight loss or achieving a perfectly sculpted physique. It serves as a pathway to help people lead more fulfilling lives, enhance their overall quality of life, and cultivate mental fortitude. He has some great takeaways for trainers and beyond. But before we get to it, make sure that you hit like and subscribe. We have new podcast episodes weekly featuring industry thought leaders and influencers. Plus, we're continuing our gym and wellness haven tours featuring inspiring founder stories. I'm your host, Chrissy Van, and this is ATFW. I'm super stoked that you're here because honestly, I encountered you obviously at IDEA and I was like, clearly you do bring the energy and I really enjoy humans like that that are willing to play and have fun. So first of all, it's nice to like formally meet you because I know last time I saw you, I was attacking you with my camera everywhere and I'm pretty sure you've been the star of the Instagram page many times now. (laughs) Uh, I appreciate it. It's fun to run into fun people and I think, you know, I think sometimes people take themselves too serious. I think the reason why I do what I do is because I don't have to take myself too serious. It's like, you know, it's like the perks of of, of our profession is like, wait, you got to be serious? Like, oh, like who does that? Like, we work at a bank, you know? So being able to be in fitness and, you know, once you kind of showed up with the camera, I'm like, oh, I like your energy. <laughs> and I think, I think the only other only other person that matched me was the 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 guy to my right with no shoes on. Yeah. Uh, oh, we had, well, he had me dying i forgot his name but boy was he funny now figure that's no no pun intended to anyone else there but that was out of what 16 different you know high level um seasoned educators and instructors and he he and i were the only this how would you say that in, in proper english we were the only two people that were actually taking the piss out of each other in in yes. the most phenomenal way <laughs> while while getting people to you know move and be more motivated I'm like be- best job ever like best job ever we get to yes. do this. you you're gonna pay me for this Well, and it's infectious too. There's such a ripple effect. I mean, we're kind of just diving right into it, which is what I love. My style is super organic, but my background, quite honestly, I came from television news, which is about as serious as it gets. Mm. And then after a 10 year career of that, I was like, this doesn't fit me anymore. There was just a part that was wanting to bust out. And I was always such a lover of the fitness space. And that's kind of how this came along. And so again, when I encounter people like yourself and truthfully, like any conversation that I have had with someone that has traveled through the upper levels of this industry, I feel like that core root of why they got into it, what it meant to them. There's such a passion there and you don't encounter that with a lot of other professions, especially people lose the spark often, the higher they go. Not here. Yes. I got to figure one out that that worked. Well, well, that's one of the reasons why I I picked that name, right? I wanted to know. For our company is is, because, so I loved physics. I, I, uh, let me see. I'm sure my physics teacher is alive. So he's going to probably laugh his head off. I knew it. Um, Physics. And so in high school, and I loved physics and I got it in like, we started in seventh and eighth grade. I went to Holland. Uh, and I was, well, I grew up in the Netherlands and in the Netherlands, you get physics seventh and eighth grade. And it's something that just clicked chemistry. Mm, not so much. You know, somebody's like, Hey, listen, we'll take your left arm. You can have both. I'm like, I'm not signing up for another you class. You were the kid causing the explosions by accident. <laughs> yeah. I was blowing stuff up for sure. Like this, oh, we're not supposed to mix those two things together. Um, 
and and physics was just one of the things that clicked. And the thing that I've always loved is, you know, Newton's law of thermodynamics. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred. It could be it could be amplified or diminished. And that's who we are as people. We are energetic beings. So not just in physics, but if you look at the metaphysics, there's a, a gentleman by the name of Bruce H. Lipton. He wrote a book called The Biology of Belief. Um, if you like anything that's energy related or anything metaphysical, get that book. And and here's why, because he even said that when you touch, when you touch something or someone on a microscopic level, we don't physically touch on a nanoscopic level, our, our energy is interacting with the energy of whatever it is of the matter that we're, we're, we're touching. And so then it goes back to being a human being. We are affected by people, right? You got good people in your life. Got good life. You got some energy suckers in there. Mm, not so good. Environment. Where do you live? You know, do you do you live in Flint, Michigan, where you have horrible water? Do you live right next to a five G tower, um, or do you live somewhere in the woods, or where you know wherever you live is probably really you know it's got woods and trees and, and everything in Canada? I just so, came out of the mountains. This is yeah. really resonating, actually. <laughs> right. But 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 what's what's really hot right now? Oh, you should ground. Like you should go stand outside, outside of your rubber soles, and just go fuel Mother Earth. And and people, I've watched a, I've watched three minutes out of a 35 minute interview on, on grounding. And I'm like, dude, this, this couldn't have been, an, it could have been an email. Like it should have just been a postcard. It'd be like, take your <laughs> shoes off, stand outside and breathe. And, and then what? Do it again tomorrow. And again, and again, and again. So energy is what we are, who we are. And so it's, it's people, it's places, it's foods, it's movement, it's thoughts, right? You got good thoughts. You're going to get good feelings. You got bad thoughts. You're going to get bad feelings. You got to, you know, Workouts, same thing. They amplify who we are. And the word energia is, is Portuguese. Uh, I'm not Brazilian. I'm not Portuguese, but I lived in Brazil for three years. Uh, my dad was a diplomat. I got most of my friends were skipping class in ninth grade to go smoke weed. And I would skip class to go to PE. I went to Montessori school so you could choose your own uh, path. And I was that kid. I was like, people were like, what are you doing? We're going to the coffee shop. What are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm going to PE. What do you want to do? I was like, I'm going to learn my, teach myself how to ice skate, teach myself how to do a backflip, like all those things. I'm like, listen, I'm going to skip class to do that because I had an option to do it. And I always liked the word energia better than energia. Energia is Spanish. Uh, I'm also not Spanish. I have, I have heritage there, but that word just really resonated with me. And then that logo, that's a that's a, a bird's eye view of my wife with without the wings or the fire hair. Um, it was just a, it's a picture. So the body is a picture of my wife that I really, really love. And, uh, I, I, well, I love Greek mythology because I was going to be a growing up. I was going to be Indiana Jones until I found out you, you sit in a, in a desert with a toothbrush for 19 hours and some old man or woman takes credit for your scrubbing, you yeah. know, <laughs> Oh, we just discovered, you know, a tomb from 5,000 years ago. I mean, you're standing there in the background with your you know, toothbrush and your little, you know, just trying know. to get into the photo op. Being like, it, was like, I, I, it, it, was, it was me. You know, like you're understudy. You don't count. And then, um, and then just the story of Icarus. I love anime. Um, I love, um, like the Medusa. Cause I, I laugh for like, my wife looks at me funny. I was like, I turn into stone. Uh, <laughs> And and just you know and that's, and besides that she's you know she's also she's the like I think the unsung hero in so many things that I do because in the world of fitness when you travel a lot and when you move around a lot uh, people always see what they think that it is like oh my gosh you get to travel and you get to go to all these countries I'm like yeah but I do all those things by myself right. and it gets old it gets really old so for people out there they're like oh you know this is the world hey if you're single ready to mingle and you want to do this do your thing but it does get a little old and it, it does get tiresome as far as just going to different places and, and working with different people um, to make it to where you can figure out what your path is. And I've always had the good fortune of saying, hey, I am I know I sound American. If you're listening, I'm not from the Bronx, New York, um, but I pick up accents and I speak five languages. So it, it's easy for me to travel internationally for uh, for fitness companies because I know how to blend in. If I, if I you know, if I'm in Canada longer than, than, than two weeks and the A's are coming out, a boat, you know, we'll the, get ya. everything changes, you know, Z instead of Z, you know, all the funny words. You know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got a maple leaf syrup somewhere. I was you know. going to say, as syrup starts to run through the soul, we do that to people, you know? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, 
Not just grounding, hug a tree, lick a tree. It's okay. You know, that's very Canadian of you. I definitely Canadian. did. I actually just had a friend visiting me and she was laughing because we went hiking together. And I am someone that very much subscribes to energy and truthfully, and I love to be transparent. So I would say this summer was one where I didn't prioritize creating space for introspection at all. I had a very adventurous summer, but it was a very distracted summer and I knew what I needed. But because I needed it so bad, she's hiking with me and I'm touching the moss being like, oh, it feels like a blanket. Like it's so alive. Breathe in the air. It smells so sweet. I'm going under logs being like, oh, smell the earth. And she was just like, oh, my God. Just like you think, you know, a person. But I was like, I do feel better. I'm like, yes. this. You, I'm all part of this. This is part of me where it really is an effective tool. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, that's 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 what. One of the reasons why I'm drawn to fitness, and and uh, I, I usually joke around and I tell people if if I had a corporate job, I'd be that guy on the security camera, with, you know, holding on to the holding on to the the printer and slamming it on my boss's desk like I quit, you know, because I I couldn't do it. I couldn't sit mm-hmm. in a little cubby all day, and you know, I'd, I'd be antsy, and um, that's why I always I, I love science and I love how it invalidates things like ADD and ADHD, and I'm like, ah, man, somebody just made that up because they wanted to make money. And in the meantime, people getting pushed drugs and pills and all that other stuff. Instead, just look at the average, you know, more well, boys when they're young, they're fidgety because they've got energy coursing through their vein. Not to say that girls don't have that, but I've I've been teaching fitness classes for over well twenty years now, and it's funny, but anytime that somebody goes, hey, can I bring my kid? I never say no. I just have one rule. Um, I'm in charge. So I tell them that in front of their parents. Like, hey, listen, I'm in charge. Mom or dad needs to get their own workout in. You got to listen to me. You can stick around, mom, but you got to be able to listen. Girls are the best listeners. They stand straight up, especially when they put their hands straight next to their body. Then I'm like, oh, it's a little gymnast. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, and then, and then you know, bringing the boy and he's like, I'm talking to him. He's looking up, finger in his nose. And I'm like, oh, gosh. And then Sometimes the girls would bring their brothers. I'm like, yeah, your brother can't come. Why? He's, he's, he's distracting. You got the giggling going on, you know? So it's just energy. And we have to be able, I think, as fitness professionals, be able to help people manage their energy. And then the older that you get in the fitness industry, you learn too that um, it's, not just, it's not just helping them manage energy. We have to adapt to that energy. So for some people, you have to be a cheerleader. You know, you got to be, you could do it. We believe in you. You know, here's a star. And the other one's like, you know, more of a coach perspective. And others like, you know, I'm like, oh, yes, great job. You know, more analytical. You know, some people want to listen to house music. Some people want to listen to Sting. You know, I, I still don't understand people that listen to slow jams, but that's your thing. I mean, that's maybe they have really good hip mobility after that. We just don't know. <laughs> You know what? Yeah. Hey, shout out to Sting. I got the, I got the pleasure of training him uh, uh, two years ago. And uh, that man, I, I hope I hope I'm as as fit as he is at seventy plus years old. You'd never know he's he's seventy plus. I'm standing there like I got my little mask on. I was like I'm fit, like, but it's like this. <laughs> yeah, just the eyeballs. Seem like Can't see me anyway. Like, I'm like, like, dude, this is awesome. And I don't fangirl of a lot of people, but I love Sting. He's just such a smooth human being in in all aspects, and doesn't listen to music when we train. So I was like, oh, okay, cool, just chill atmosphere. And but it just it's such a, a great example of, hey, that is a different human being. So as a fitness coach, you got to be able to adapt to that person. And that's when you create a synergy that is, I think, hands down, it's unbeatable. Like there's nobody in the world that could match um, match you or surpass you once you click with a client. Well, and I think it's such an important and valuable relationship for anyone. Like even I was just speaking to myself, once I felt the misalignment happening and I am somebody that truly does take a lot of time to build awareness and identify, oh, this isn't quite feeling right or centered with myself. What is that? Let's get curious. Let's explore. But one of the first steps I had was rehiring an old trainer that I had had. And I like to think, Yes, I know how to navigate in a gym space, but there is something beautiful about that relationship that can be built that pulls so much more out of yourself. Or sometimes you just need a fresh set of eyes on you to gain a new perspective. And it does go so far beyond the physical. And it's exactly as you speak. You truly are aiding to someone in so many different elements of their being. It, it You can completely transform somebody's energy, right? 
at having yes. it move through them or having it go at a different frequency when maybe we're vibrating a little bit low. Obviously, I could tell I was like, this guy, the minute I walked into idea, I was like, he's vibing high. Like, I'm going to uh, go over there. That's why I ended up on so many shots because and you could see within the group that you had around you, it was a transfer of that energy. And then all of a sudden it's going around and then they're the ones that are spreading it further. And that's a really special gift. I'm curious with your interest in regards to metaphysical and all of that. Was that always a little bit part of how you grew up? Was it your parents or when did you oh, start yeah. to garner this understanding? Um. Well, my mom, my mom used to tell me, you know, growing up. So I'm, I'm, I'm a kid. I'm like, I'm raised homeopathically, you know, and you know, calendula and arnica is all over our house and homes. Now it is in our house here. Witch hazel, you know, witch hazel. This best, by the way, if you shave and you use witch hazel, it's a great toner, but it's also good aftershave. Plug. Yeah, there you um, go. Good for like little bumps, and then you won't get them. No razor right? burn. <laughs> and and uh, and my mom, my mom used to always tell me. You know, and she's well, she's Catholic. I think we're like my sister and I are the only two that didn't do our Holy Communion, even though I've like I've consumed communion. And my best friend's like, you know, you're going to hell. No. They're like, right? <laughs> I was like, hey, you know, and so, is this wine? It's grape juice. Very disappointing. Yeah. Um, yeah. To 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 that point, being able to come from a household where my mother would tell me like, hey, you are, uh, you are godly. You're part of God. God is part of you, and and so that means that you could pray to yourself. Right. And funny enough, when I started reading the biology of belief, that's what you do. Your conscious, your subconscious, they work together. And so you're basically taking your consciousness and pushing things into your subconscious. So those are the words that we repeat a mantra all over. Those are the those are the the things that we read and listen to. Um and so it's been a very big part of of my 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 life. I think when I was like 10 or 11, we went to a Suriname, we went to the inlands where my grandmother's from and, you know, to like a tribe. And when I tell you tribe is like, you know, loincloth and people fishing and living in huts and very much energy based. And the things that I saw and experienced there at, at a very young age, I was like, okay, there's, there's levels to it. And I think when you live like the big city life, you kind of detach from that. And that's where, you know, think about how many, you know, executives, you know, pay tens of thousands of dollars for like three day retreat in, the, in you know, to stand on the grass field, no shoes on and have somebody tell them, breathe. Oh, yeah. Thank you. That'll be, you know, 1995. And that's $19,995. Um, that I think is, is phenomenal just because of all the different parts of your body that you can affect. And once you start really tuning into the science of things, neuroscience is really big, right? Um, um, well, we are very practiced in being in the grooves of our brain and just continuing on that track unless you decide to explore and start building other neuron connections. Yes, right. So you have neuro, you have and it's neurogenesis. So and I know neuroplasticity is a big word, but neurogenesis is even bigger because you can actually you can rebuild your brain. That's when people are like, oh my gosh, he's walking again. That's real. That's that's real in, in every sense of the being. And my mother and my father both. Uh, academia and my my mom is I, what she's seventy probably three sorry mom if I mess it up um, she's seventy three but she I think she's still going to school like she has five PhDs she's got a bucket full of masters she's got a ba huge basket full of you know bachelors and she keeps accumulating knowledge traditional Chinese medicine Chinese acupuncture Japanese acupuncture acupressure and I was always the guinea pig you know. Oh, I come home. Oh, I'm practicing. And I'm like half asleep. I wake up. My mom's like massaging my feet, looking at the book. I'm like, this is great. Go back to sleep. And so it's always been a quest to learn more, to, to be able to, to serve better. And when you start learning about sounds, binaural sounds, and how different sounds affect your brain and different frequencies and brain waves, this is this isn't made up. I know like an Instagram is like, oh, you know, they, they talk about it, but Instagram is is a horrible news source if you just go off what you see, because you know. You a little walk, bit filtered and curated. Right, right. And then, then you start thinking about light. How does lighting affect our sound? And, um, you know, I worked with Under Armour for a little while, and they were talk, talking to us about sleep deprivation and how sleep deprivation, you know, goes right in towards Alzheimer's and dementia. So and my motto used to be, I'll sleep when I'm dead. Um, and, you know, idea conventions, oh, my gosh, I'd run off three hours of sleep for five days straight, you know, just because it's like, ah, we keep going. No, you don't. Because you pay for it way later. You have to cash in way later. So my my family background helped me understand that we have to continue to learn. We have to continue to grow. We have to be able to say um, no to a, a, a lot of things that don't serve us. And so the metaphysical aspect 
is not just, you know, sitting there and going ohm and listen to somebody you know, go on a glass, you know, and it's it's more than that. It's what what do you listen to? What how does it affect your brain? What do you smell? How does it affect your brain? You know, what do you see and touch and hear? And, you know, um, uh, there's a, a company that came and I, and I love them, Naboso, right? Naboso, uh, with Dr. shout out to Dr. Emily Splickle. She uh, she developed something that if you think about it, it's so simple. It's like, it's a nodule mat, right? And it's Naboso technology. And, and if, for those that don't know, it's it's basically a spiky mat. Sorry if I'm totally bastardizing this, Emily. Um, but it's like a spiky mat that will light up your brain. And there's nothing like it. So it doesn't really matter where I've you go. I've never tried it. Oh my gosh. It's just, it just feels good. So if you're like a big yogi or if you need a different mat, they have mats and insoles. And it's just something that stimulates your feet because we are stuck in shoes. Like, you know, the, the big shoe brands, they don't do it right because they can't go into the the smaller foot brands like the, the Paluvas or the Vibrams or the Vivo Barefoots or the Zeros. They can't go there because once they start telling people that, a wide toe box and a neutral sole is what you should be wearing. Imagine the amount of money they're going to lose because they they can't promote the Nike Air Max or you know the Shocks or whatever brand like Adidas Rays and you know the Yeezys. These shoes are ugly as sin, and 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 they don't. Well, they're really cool. Some of them look really cool. I'm not gonna lie. I got a you know I've got a massive shoe problem, but I call those transition shoes. I walk from to the gym in my stylish shoes, and then I put my my work shoes on, and most of the time. I'm barefoot, barefoot right now, you know, and my, my feet are. Second, I was like, how flexible is he? <laughs> You're just going to like, what? <laughs> there so, you go. <laughs> so my feet are always touching something that stimulates it because that stimulates my brain. So the more, not more stimulus I can create, but the more I can keep my body awake, the more I'll benefit from it. And those are the little things that, that you know, that I want to do. That, so there's a feel, there's a touch, there's a smell. There's an experience. And so that company, uh, Matt, that I showed you, it's called Centered. And I don't work for them, hopefully, not yet. Well, I don't know. Um, Lara, it's out me. there now. You never know it's what comes out there back now. to you. But what, what they did is, is, is it's one of a kind. And I love working with one of a kind uh, products. Mm -hmm. They created a, a essential oil in a balm, like a lip balm that you screw mm -hmm. up and you put on your, your pressure yep. points. Like frankincense and all this, it still smells like because I did it this morning. Um, but those smells, they create a sensation in your brain. So you can change your day in a matter of you know, a minute. You're having a bad day, stop what you're doing. Sit down for a second. Really take in what, what is affecting you and let it go. Let that sh go. Because you can change your mood at any given moment. There's not a soul that leaves a workout, beat down or not, that says, that was terrible. I'm never coming back. You know, right. maybe you have because it maybe it's a, it's a scary workout, but you got a good workout in. Oh my gosh, the endorphins are gonna be like, woo, this is good. And you know, I'll, I tell all the women, you see that glow? Yeah, yeah, it's free. It's included. Yep. It's complimentary. <laughs> you don't have to go to Mac and get some, you know, powdered. And you know, I live in Las Vegas, so I've seen it all here. I bet. <laughs> I bet. But you speak to something so true as well when you were talking about the sleep deprivation and how much of society looks at behaviors like that as a badge of honor. I do think that there's so much more conversation that now is almost giving us permission to slow down and be more aware. But for so long, if you were that person that's like, yeah, I went to this conference and only slept three hours. Everyone's like, good on you. You worked hard. Da, da, da. Where in reality, exactly that. You're like, you're either going to, your body's going to hit halt either then or eventually down the line. It's cumulative. Like I, I know there's like the body keeps score and it is so true. That is stored within you if you're not going to create space. Yeah. Well, the, your REMs, your REMs, your REM sleep cycle, right? So that's, that's the cycle that you want to be. You don't want to be in light sleep. Um, and I know we all have, I'm sure, I don't know if you have anything around you. This is like a whoop. Uh, other people have garments and Apple watches. And there's so many different things that sleep score is probably the original, by the way, that's free for the people that are, you know, Hey, if you don't have the money to do it, get it on your phone for free. Yeah. So free app. I don't work for them either. Um, I used to, and they're really nice. Um, but your REM cycle when you're in that state, so throughout the entire day, you build up plaque on your brain. And so Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and dementia, they're really closely related to that plaque. And then when you sleep, when you get consistent, long, deep, not deep, deep sleep, but REM sleep, 
then it's almost like the cleaning crew goes through and it cleans up your your plaque, which helps you function better and kind of steers you clear of you know the, the Alzheimer's and dementia um, uh, division of life because all those things are are way more prevalent now just because people are ignoring their sleep. And I think being in in a capitalistic society, I'm 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 from a what a socialistic capitalistic monarchy. That's the Netherlands. Emphasis on socialist. I know people are going, oh, right? Hey, you bump your toe, you can walk into any hospital and you're taken care of. Um, yep. especially if you're just a passport holder. But besides that, money turns everything in the US. So people they they live to work. They don't work to live. They live to work. And by doing so, they actually put themselves in a predicament where when you're 65, what quality of life do you have left? You know, I I, I value that more than anything. It's the quality of life. You know, you can work your head off, but I'm sure we all know people that are like, oh, you know, yeah, no, Joey's dad, he's, you know, a multi-bajillionaire, but he's a vegetable right now. We can't talk to him. Well, and there's no promise that you're even going to make it to that time. Like every single time I've always been someone that's very transparent about my age and people are like, oh, I never tell anyone or never ask a woman how old they are. And I'm like, no, every circle around the sun, I'm very lucky to have. And not everyone has a guarantee of that. And I think, you know, in my personal experience at a young age, I became familiar with the fragility of life through circumstance. And as hard as that was, it was also one of the best gifts I could have ever had. Because it makes you appreciate the now. Because it is truthfully the only thing we have promise of. Before we continue our discussion, we're going to flex some gratitude to our sponsor, the British Columbia Personal Training Institute. Learn how to train, gain, and retain clients. Visit bcpti.ca. The amount of people, and it's like they've got this life script 2.0. I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to be happy. The someday syndrome, when I get here, when I get here. And it is, you could have all the wealth in the world, but where is the quality? And if you've never taken care of yourself on the journey to get there, which a lot of people haven't because distraction, this, that, you're pulled like an elastic as far, as far as you can go. And then finally, when you get a second to breathe, you snap. Yeah, And it's just... Yeah. Nobody really takes the time or space, I feel, because there's so many distractions to have a step back and acknowledge that. Absolutely. Well, I think from a from a fitness point of view, and I think when I speak about fitness, and I just want everybody to, to understand that fitness isn't like, if you think fitness, most people think, oh, I got to work out and run. No, no. Uh, there's an old Lao Tzu quote. I don't know it by heart, but I like it. Um, and he basically talks about the fitness of man, right? Man not being exclusive to the gender man, but m more of the fitness of a human being is, is directly related to the, the health of their mind and their body. That's his definition of fitness. And I love that definition because we are finally making that full circle again. We're like, hey, you know what? Start taking care of your, your mind, not just your, your emotional and your, and your psychological well-being, but literally your brain. You know, taking care of your brain and, and your body because if you don't take the time to take a break for your body, your body will take a break for you. And there's a huge difference there when you look at the time. One is indefinite and or not determined by you. That's the one that your body takes. You know, if you break down, you, your body's taking a break. Or you can say, hey, I'm going to make sure I'm consistent in my bedtime. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure that... Um, I, I do take the time to roll out my body and to hydrate properly and to feed it and nourish it because this vessel, we're built to make it to 150 years. And the, the average lifespan in the United States is what, 76, 75 right now? And like right? decreasing in a lot of elements too, which is terrifying. Yeah. Well, because we're also just, we're also just ingesting what we are told instead of learning. And I, I tell my kids, like, you got, you got a phone, use it. Don't just don't just Snapchat it, you know, Google it. Look, is this is this good? Is this bad? And and what's unfortunate is once you Google it, you're gonna get a whole lot of answers. But you gotta be able to read through them and disseminate information. And I think that's a skill that should be taught. That's in I think that should, that's a skill that everybody should learn. Like, how do I actually find out what the truth is? You know, it's an age-old, you know, Latin proverb, veritas est, like what is truth? But once you start 
looking for it, yeah, don't you know? Don't be afraid for what you're going to find because you're going to find some really cool stuff. Some of it's going to be really sad. Some of it you're going to start looking left and right. You're going to be looking at people like you don't serve me, or you're looking at a job, or uh, maybe it's it is a gym or a workout where you're kind of going, you don't serve me either. And then you'll start looking at the the different places and people and things in your life that do serve you that fulfill you because we don't have a lot of time on the planet and um i so sound like that old guy right now um but yeah when 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 i was i think 19 or 20 i told my dad um he was like you know you gotta take it easy and he was my age i'm 45 right now he's my age and i'm looking at him like bro I'm like invincible. I'm fast. I'm like, explosive. haven't you heard? <laughs> look, look, is this, look at this, right? And and he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll talk when you turn 45. Turn 45, phone rings. So you ready for that talk? I'm like, what talk? And I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> and I like it. It's a level of pettiness. There's like, I got it from my dad. Um, but it's it's very true because when you can look back, and that's where I try to I try to mentor and 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 teach and share as much knowledge with younger trainers and, and if you're an older trainer in and or an old, older coach in in the fitness industry talk to the young ones because the the churn rate is is a year like people don't survive longer in the fitness industry longer than a year i don't know what it's like in canada but in the us it's about a year and then you're out they spit you out because they usually go to big box gyms where you have good life fitness over there the big the biggest gym one of the biggest gyms in canada is good life and i'm sure that when you work there um and and actually shout out to to, to good life because i work with them quite a bit um, back in the day. And I do like the culture. They nurture, then they bring you in. But as a coach, you have to want to learn and you have to understand. And if you're getting started, yeah, you're going to work the floor shift. It's, there's nothing sexy about it. You're going to clean up after people. You're going to learn about how many people don't clean up after themselves. But that is such a phenomenal character builder. That if you work in the fitness industry and you've never worked a floor shift, just go do it. Just go do it just so you can say you did it. And then and then you, you'll you gain a lot more self-respect. Don't worry about what anybody else says, but you'll understand when the old heads start talking and you kind of go, no, I know what it's like to get it get there at 4.30 and you know you find out that the, the night shift didn't clean up half the stuff. Now you're over there re-racking dumbbells and hey, you're going to get a workout in, but you'll also learn what it means like to do the hard work part instead of like, oh, let me just sit in the office and I'm the top trainer and a college degree and, you know, and, and, and business should just be fed to me. That, yeah. that was me. That was pretty much me when I first started. I'm like, uh, yeah, just feed me. No, no, dude, you got the floor shift at 5 a.m. Okay. Well, and That's I think it's good. exacerbated as well, I'm sure, for a lot of young trainers because there's such a pressure for success because of what they're exposed to when you talk about social media and that landscape. I think more and more, it's very easy to have a desire or want for a shortcut because it can seem as though everyone just got to where they were going instantly. Because exactly as you said, when we go on those platforms, you are getting the filtered version. And as a result, I'm like, if you're a younger mind, it would be very easy to feel that pressure of why am I not when will I be? Why am I not there yet? And it is kind of that old adage of kind of quitting before the consistency. But I do think that for generations younger than us, there's an exponent on the pressure to a large degree because of what they're exposed to and because they've grown up with it as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, how many people look at, you know, Joey with the six pack abs, you know, and and but when you put a microphone in Joey's face, he's, he cramps up or you know, you get that muscle cramp. Get, oh, I can't talk. <laughs> <Watch off>. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it, yeah, it's 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 scary. But and and we live in a you know, it's what is it now? X. It's not called X, but the Twitter age. Like everything has to be 140 characters or whatever, 210 now. It's still, it's short. Like, oh, how can I lose weight? You know, biggest loser style. Well, they did it in six weeks. That's that show wreaked havoc on the fitness industry because I would have people come in for for initial calls and they'd be like, all right, well, I just. No, watch the biggest loser yesterday. I was like, throw away your TV. Don't watch that. That's just it's garbage. And I'll say to this day, it's garbage. The only good thing that came out of that show is that it motivated people to get going. That's right. the but the way that they did it, unnatural, unhealthy, dangerous. Uh, I think what 80% of all contestants gained their weight back or some of their yeah, weight. Yeah, I, I actually stumbled upon an article quite recently because I was like, Oh yeah, I kind of forgot that that even existed growing up. And then you're not wrong. The percentage was so little that managed and a lot of their personal stories really illustrated because the habits and behaviors and the mental work 
Like, yes, the physical work was done, but the mental work required to make those types of lifestyle and mindset shifts weren't done. And it's like you have all of the support to guide you through without yep. having had to actually process and work through whatever your particularly journey was. And then they were just left with all of that. And if yeah. your coping mechanism initially was to sit and binge watch your show or sit down and just like have endless meals, of course, you're going to go back to the coping mechanisms that you know, but it was quite staggering to hear some of the personal stories of how much of a mental impact that had in the aftermath, which is well, just sad. just the name of your podcast, right? All things fitness and wellness, wellness. Well, these are things that need they need to be rooted in science. Like, hey, no, I don't I don't know Bob Harper. I don't know Jillian Michaels. I don't need, you know either one of them personally, but I know that they were lacking the knowledge to properly equip these participants besides, Hey, here's 700 calories. Oh, by the way, there's a medical staff on the other side of the camera. And yeah, I'm going to run you into the ground hard. And then the amount of stress that they created, the amount, you know, people were dropping and that's the, unfortunately the, the consumers were like, yeah, you know, carnage, let's see somebody you know, go face first on a treadmill. And I'm like, oh, the producers in the background, like, yes, this is going to be a great yeah. clip to tee up our show on Thursday. Yep. Yep. And you know, cue dramatic music. Uh, but if you then start looking at those two individuals, um, they weren't really rooted in science. They weren't really like, really look at their at their qualifications. Do they have a collegiate background? I don't know about Bob Harper, but Jillian Michaels, no way. You know, great spokesperson. Like once again, it's really hard for, well, it's kind of easy for me to pick her apart um, from a biomechanical point of view. But from a motivational point of view, hey, she motivated a lot of people. But it's almost equivalent to saying like, all right, slide open the door of an airplane we're gonna jump and we're gonna give you a backpack what's in the backpack lunch and an umbrella you know you'll make it work you know and every eighth one of you will have a parachute but nobody knows which one yeah <laughs> that's what that show is like like oh jump out yay i became the biggest loser here's a hundred grand and uh you know a, a year contract and there's actually i think there's one gentleman he's still keeping it off and he's still speaking about it and i, I really think there's a couple of them that have really championed that, but also they started realizing I got to be able to function at home. Mm -hmm. They probably going had to do to your, so much work. Going back to your environment, right? So you go to this really beautiful place. They put you at like this ranch and whatever. And like, oh my gosh. And like your lifeline is being in that place, but it's also dependent on how much weight can you lose. And, you know, I can only imagine what some of these people did off camera, you know, but then you're deprived from your family. You can't talk to them. You get one little call, like you're in jail. and you know, all for the sake of ratings. And so I think there's other shows that were out there that were more responsible. They, you know, they, uh, I think there was one, um, it was, uh, Brittany Fowler was on there. Was, they took a, they took a group of people for 30 days or 60 days. And then after 30 or 60 days, they just guided them for 30, or 60 days. And then they let them go on their own program for 30, 60 days. And those people have actually been more successful, but it's not sexy. It's not rating grabbing. Nobody's falling or passing out or, you know, or no fights because you're, you know, you're just hangry, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> when you are on a calorie deficit for any prolonged period of time, it's not you that's coming out after day yeah. five. <laughs> yeah. So I think, you know, the, the, but, but so cool now is that because of the, uh, because of our, our, our media, you have an option to either go with the, the quick fixes that are not supported in science that are supported by marketing dollars. I'll pick another one for it. I don't care. Uh, v shred terrible, just the worst. Like you start looking at what they're selling. It's just, it's a supplement line. And I love, uh, there's a, 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 a dietitian for the Cincinnati Bengals name is Chris Moore. And I love how he says it. They shouldn't be su supplements. They should be, um, compliments. So your supplements should already, already um, complement your diet, your wholesome diet. Because when you supplement, think of the word, you are substituting something in f that should have been real food. Mm -hmm. Eat your badges. Right. I know Eat it's your so fruit. simple, but. Yeah. But it's scary because then you got all the people going, no, fruit's got too much sugar. You know, it's really hard if you don't know. And you're like this person that is just like, you know, I don't know, you're 250 pounds. You woke up one morning and you're like, you realize like, this is not good. You know, you're 300 pounds. This is not good. Um, how do I get out of this? Well, you go, you don't go to a gym to lose weight. You go to a gym to move better. You go see a registered dietitian or a clinical um, 
clinical, you know, functional uh, nutritionist. You know, one of them is with Athletes Nutrition. That's a really powerful uh, young young lady, uh, Jacqueline Sclaver. I'll name drop all day on here, by the way. Yes, please. Um, but these are all people that are, they they dedicate their lives to science, to learning more so that they can be a, a greater service. And I know that, you know, some gym owners be like, dude, what are you doing? You know, you can come to my gym and lose weight. Yeah, but caloric deficit and guidance in food, that's outside of my scope. Regardless if you have precision nutrition or not, I, I love precision nutrition. That's like the gold standard. So as fitness professionals, we can educate about food, but you can't prescribe anything. And that's yes. where there's that fine line, but a lot of people don't know that. So you got these trainers going, ah, oh, you know, I'm a, I'm a nutritionist through fill in the blank certification. Stay in your lane. Mm-hmm. Stay in your lane. You know, I've, I've got three or four different nutritionists and registered dietitians by that, by, by, by saying it correctly, that I lean on so that I know that I can stay in my lane. Some of them are certified personal trainers. Some of them are not, but it also comes back. Hey, Mark, can you help me? You know, this person's got a hip issue. Can you help me with this? Or, you know, this athlete wants to move faster. Can you help with this? Absolutely. And then you build a team. And that's, in essence, for me, that's the fitness world. It is a big, so the reason that it's a circle, I look at the world of fitness like it's a ball with a, you know, let's say a billion strands on it. And the goal for me personally is to get everybody to pull that particular fitness ball in the same direction. But right now, there's everybody's pulling in their own direction, even though we're, most of us are pointing in this, like we're all pointing north, but somebody's like, no, no, we'll go south first and we'll loop around, you know, east and then we'll go north. Somebody's using the Apple Maps when they should be using the Google Maps. Always. Right? Ways, baby. Ways. 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 At least you know where the cops are parked. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, we got to do it together. Well, and especially when we do, I mean, obviously, one of the things that's very acknowledged in the fitness industry now is the massive parts of the population that aren't moving at all. And it's exactly as you said, it doesn't necessarily need to be a gym space. It really is about movement and finding something that resonates with you. I know you've obviously worked with so many different companies and just because of your education and somebody that clearly stands very strongly with your ethos, how do you choose which companies you are going to work with? Because I know you've had so many appearances on some pretty large platforms as well. I imagine you don't just take every offer that comes your way. Uh, no, I've actually been, it's funny. I've actually been denied offers because they think like, oh, you're a that guy. I'm like, no, 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 I'm, I'm a movement guy. I'm not a that guy. I'm a movement guy. Um, right now, honestly, it's, it's, it's being around a team. Um, I honestly get a little sick of, of you know, when, when fitness companies tell you like, oh, we're family. No, 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 we don't, don't do that because my family is not like your family. Because if, if you show up at my family and somebody starts talking smack, you look at me like, this is for real. This, this is normal here, right? Or maybe I come to your, you know, your family barbecue and you're like, you're like, oh, who brought the bald guy? I'm like, really? For a business to, to, to go with the family thing? No. Team. Yes. Because everybody has a function in a team. And hey, does that mean that you know, you're, you're going to get along and we're going to go on road trips and we're going to have a great time. No, you might not get along with, you know, Barbara from accounting, but guess what? When you work together, it's flawless because you have a common goal. So, you know, currently, uh, I'm working with a a company called T2, the T2, uh, fusion trainer. And, uh, I, I like them. And, you know, for people that know me, like, you know, like, Oh, Mark, but you're always been a TRX guy. Yeah. I was a TRX guy for a long time, but, um, they decided to part ways with me because they they didn't like the fact that I was teaching movement. Um, and hey, I've, I've had 14 wonderful years with TRX. Uh, thank you, you know, but I've also poured in 14 years worth of all my energy um, without ever skipping a beat. And I am one of those people Then when I'm on your team, I am the tip of the spear. It's almost like, you know, like, hey, somebody's talking smack about Chrissy. You don't get to talk smack about Chrissy. I get to talk smack about Chris because that's my teammate, you know, but you don't, you don't get to talk smack about my teammate and that's who I've always been. And so by the time that, um, I ended up with life fitness and under armor, under armor has a saying called protect this house. I love it because that's exactly that protect this house. Meaning that when we are a team, it doesn't matter what happens inside the house. We protect that house at all costs. So working with a company like the T2 fusion trainer it's just different for me. It's a, it's an evolution of of you know. Hey, does it does it encompass suspended training? Sure, it does, but it does a whole lot more. Um, and it's just an evolution. And funny enough, it's it's almost 
10 years older than an actual TRX suspension trainer. And I used to be that guy that's like, this, this is the only thing in the market. And then you start learning a little bit more like, oh, I guess I was wrong. Right. And this is a company that's, it's just, you know, right now it's just, it's five of us. It's six of us. You know, we've got a, we've got a publicist, marketing, we've got sales, you know, I'm doing education there and it's fantastic. And, and what I love about d- being able to pick other companies is that I promise myself that I don't pick companies that conflict or compete directly with each other. Because in essence, if you're in the fitness industry, I could be working with X and Y. And if you say, well, all the letters in the alphabet are considered the fitness industry, you can only work with one letter. No way. Because an A is not a B and a B is not a C. Mm-hmm. So the other company that, that that I'm probably working with is Total Motion 360. And it's the way that I describe it, it's essentially a portable um a portable landmine that you can unscrew into a mace and to a club. And you know, it's a the bar weighs 35 pounds, so it's not an, an intimidating 45 pounds. Cause I know some women are like, I can't lift that much because I'll get bulky. I'm like, dude, you want to get bulky? I'm like, get strong, mother ucker. To me, That's I'm like, what... pass it on over. Let's do right. some reps. Bring it over, bring it over. <laughs> yeah. Hey, strength keeps you out of the grave, you know? Yeah. So, so, oh, I love know. it. And it's like the strength of the mind. Yeah. I yeah, yeah. Big you fan know? of lifting things and putting them down. <laughs> Exactly. Right. So these companies like, and yeah, I work with a, I work with Quest Nutrition. I'm very blessed to work with them. And it's all, this is relationship based. I get to all these places because, um, the only thing that you really have in the industry is your name. And once your name gets tainted or if you do something wrong, it's hard to recover. And I've, I've, you know, I've run into people using my name to further their business only to find out that they're, you know, scamming people. And the next thing I know, I've got to send letters. Hey, it's not me. I'm not really, I'm not directly related with these companies. So yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not familiar with the fitness industry, a lot of companies are here for the money grab. They're making something that costs them $15 to make, and they're pricing it at 300 bucks. That's a money grab. If anything, make something a little bit more affordable because you cannot make fitness for everyone if not everyone can afford it. Right? So then to me, it has to become more of a system. So what if I can't afford it? Well, guess what? The companies that I decide to work with, we serve. We don't just sell. We serve. We don't just sell. And we serve people that, what if you can't afford it? Well, how can we help you feel and move better? But, you know, Because at a certain point, if you say like, wow, your product costs $500. Yes. I can't afford that. Okay. Well, hey, stick around. We're going to get you in the right physical shape so that you can get into the right mental shape so that you can get right into the best financial shape because of the other pieces in the puzzle. And that's how we help people. Ultimately, we help them by helping themselves and showing that they're not alone. Does that mean you might have to lose a couple of friends or not lose them, but prioritize the people that you're dealing with? Maybe so, but then you have a better quality of life and you're pursuing the quality of life versus, oh, okay, well, you know, I've got five cars, I've got, you know, five houses and three, you know, dogs and two wives and yippity do that, you know, been there, done that. Not me personally, but I've had clients that have all of that. and. They're some of the most miserable people. Yes. They have That's it all. That's why they generally have a lot of the <laughs> things. Because I, I remember reading the science on it once, and I cannot quote it, but it was like the length of time that you get that hit from that purchase is so minimal. Like it's such a fleeting feeling, but it's addictive. And then they just yeah. chase it. Where really, it's so external. Yes. And it seems so cliche, but you're like, you actually have to go in you're probably going to have to look at some hard things about yourself. And it's also that understanding that there is no destination. It is a consistent cycle of improvement. And sometimes I think when you've reached a certain pillar of success, that can become more difficult to digest because you start to take flight and all the things. And it's very humbling when you have to reach a point and be like, actually, I need to go in and reevaluate a couple of things. I'm actually probably going to have to change some behaviors. I may have to fill my mind with different resources. What information am I actually digesting? I always think of physical diet and mental diet. How much do we think about mental diet or conversations that we're having with people? But I truly think sometimes it's when you think you've found your way. And then when you have to go through that metamorphosis where we actually encounter more resistance because people kind of want to be like, I made it. But I'm like, yeah. this is life. I hope I never make it well, in the right context. You know what I mean? I, I, I love what you said. It's, it's not as much a destination, right? It's the journey that you're on. And that journey can go left, right? And 
I think uh, if you've ever seen some meme somewhere, you know, the success, what people think success is versus the squiggly yes. line <laughs> is way up, right? That's what it is. And and funny enough, I, I had the pleasure of of, of um, meeting meeting the Joneses. You ever heard uh, that, that expression, keeping up with the Joneses? Yep. Well, the Tudor Jones family lives in Greenwich, Connecticut. And uh, I never forget, I had to go to their house and um, I forgot what neighborhood it was. I know my wife knows. Um, and we're, I'm driving in there and they're like, well, you got to meet them at the country club. So I drove to the biggest house I could see because it looked like a country club. Ring the doorbell, butler opens up. Hello? I'm like, hi. And I'm like, this is not a country club. <laughs> and then uh, and I'm like, I'm here, you know, for the, the Tudor Jones. And he goes, oh, they're at the country club. And I'm like, this isn't it. And he goes, no, nah, that's next door. And smaller building. And I'm like, oh, that. But dealing with those people, they were one of the few, few people that they, 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 they're the epitome of the word, keeping up with the Joneses. They gave back so much to the point where like Halloween, oh my gosh, their house is a draw. Christmas, they, they managed to change the frequency of the local radio to their house when they have their parties, the Christmas parties. So you can just tune into the radio and, and do the little Christmas drive by and listen yeah. to the music from their house. But those, those were the, the, the few that really got it. It says, Hey, we got into a pinnacle where we can actually give back. And that's the, you know, the, the digesting of information. How do you deal with all this, 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 these rushes that people get like, Oh, I'm going to buy a, you know, $200,000 car. Yes. And the moment you drive it off the lot, it's 190. Yeah. <laughs> 185. And it's just, yeah. you know, and, and then eventually you just park it in the garage and you invite your friends over and go, want to see my new car? Wow. Great, great. Want to see the new pool? Wow, right? Hey, how you doing? I'm really depressed, bro. Right. And then you talk to somebody that's, you know, spinning pizza dough, best day ever. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, we're definitely out of touch uh, in so many ways. And I, I believe that fitness unites it all. Fitness allows for all of us to, to be equal. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why why I, I pick the companies that I pick with, that, that, that we work with. And they're they're all startups except for a center the, the mat that i showed you mm -hmm. oh my gosh i'm gonna send you a box um they they get it and it's and it's it's funny it's an english company that wants to break into the u.s and um it it's those people that get it whether they're startups or they're somewhat established they get it that they're here to serve other people they're not just here to serve your bank account in your logo there it's kind of how we started the conversation but around her wings, yeah. what's tell me? I'm like, where are we so, taking flight? What's the goal here? So meaning the the logo or the company? Yeah, yeah, both. I mean, I think okay. it probably has a in tandem answer here. Well, yeah, I think you know, like I I I remember like we were so this logo was originally designed because uh, her and I started a record label, and but it was like in 2000, like right when the when the a record label for what? Who's the? I'm like, now oh, tell me more. I was oh, like, boy. I need a backstory here. <laughs> okay, so so we we had a, a record label at first. We we started as a production company, and then we got talked into being a record label. We just don't do it. Um, at the time, this was before Spotify. This is before like I, you know, this is way before anything. And we had a band that we started with called Contact, and they had a song uh, that you can actually find right now. It's called Working Girl. You'd you'd love it. You'd love it. Uh, my wife loves it, dude. and. From a lyrical perspective, it's just eh, it's such an empowering song. And they were just like a pop style band, beautiful, beautiful voices. Uh, the guy that the the lead singer is Bronx style Bob, and uh, he was one of those guys that got signed to the same record label as a uh, Seal and uh, Lenny Kravitz at the time. Cool. But he came in as a rapper, but he could sing like an angel. And uh, they wanted him to rap, and he wanted to sing, so didn't work. Right back in those days, you get shelved, forget about it, and. We were pushing them, and then uh, we ran into a, another band um, named Eight Days Gone. They are no longer, but uh, timeless music. Like if, I'll share the music with you, and you can use it because, well, the, the second two, because we own the rights still to it. And then Grizz. Grizz was a rapper um, that wanted to be more rock, and he came from uh, Flavor Unit Records. That's a, that's a, a Queen Latifah's records label, and, uh, and Shaquem, Queen Latifah and Shaquem own that. And we started going with these, you know, these, these bands and they had albums. We made, we had them create albums, one of a kind music to this day. There's nothing like it. Um, but 
you know, dealing with people. Not everybody's ready for the ride. Not everybody's ready for the grind. And, you know, the, the, unfortunately eight days gone, the, 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 the artist that got really fed up because it, it, it wasn't happening, you know, like you, you're digging, you're digging, you're like, we're, we're right there. We're right there. Like, no, I'm done. Then poof, right. The lead singer disappears. You're done. Oh, the guitar is phenomenal. And it's just one of those things. And we didn't, we weren't able to push it through because the record labels were also collapsing and merging at that time between 2003 and 2000 and, you know, eight and nine, you know, then, then the financial collapse. So I usually liken that story to saying we boarded the Titanic with all our life savings. And while it was sinking, you're like just reaching in your bag and like, whoa, you're just throwing, <laughs> throwing your money overboard, you know, women and children first, let me empty the bag first. You know, yeah, we can't exactly. Anyway, so. Chuck over the luggage, the big yeah. trunk, that too. Oh, very, goodness. Very expensive lesson, but it, it's, you know, to this day, like we have a hard time sometimes listening to it because it just brings tears to our eyes, all the work and all the time that we put in. Uh, and we were, we were that record label that went in and said, we're going to do it 50-50. You know, we're, we're not going to sign you to a deal, give you a signing bonus and then milk you Puff Daddy style. Uh, we're going to, you know, you're going to retain your publishing because we can't lay claim on what you wrote. Mm -hmm. That's unfair. Mm -hmm. And then they, the record labels usually say, well, but we're making an investment. You can recoup in any other way. There's a bajillion other ways to recoup your money. And uh, we made it a 50-50 deal. And we always told them where you stay, we stay. You know, so if it's, you know, like you stay at the Motel 6, well, we're right next door at the Motel 6, you know. So it's not like you stay in a in a shed and we're going to go stay in the Four Seasons. Yeah. That's just the, the most backwards uh, of, of things. And that's how this, this that's how that logo came to be because it was Raging Grace Records. And uh, so my wife's name is Grace. Raging Grace. Incredible. Okay. So she's, she's got still a little there. fire. Love it. Yep. Oh, a lot of fire. Then hence the hair, right? Hence the, yes. you know, the fiery hair there. <laughs> and so from a, from a company point of view, that that's, that's something that, you know, we wanted to always represent. It's like, Hey, we're, we're always here to, to teach, but we're always here to learn. It's a 50, 50 agreement. Like, you know, we're, we're not just, you know, we dealt with producers at the time that were, that were just saying like, okay, so what do you want me to do? And I'm like, and we're like, what are you asking me for? You're the expert here. Do what you got to do. So the records that we had, we didn't give them direction. We gave them direction, but we didn't tell them how. We told them, hey, how about this? And my wife is phenomenal when it comes to that from a creative point of view. You know, she would just kind of tell them, hey, do this, do that. And But the producers and the artists, they got to do 100% what they wanted to do. So, hey, that's how we got we got a record from Eight Days Gone. It was done in eight days. Uh, well, letting that creative flow, right? If If you're trying to bat somebody's creative flow and funnel it in a certain direction, you're generally going to squash the flow. It's just the way it goes. Yes. And so that's how we, we ended up just creating this, this, this company. And for me, when I, when I went into the, the fitness aspect of it, it was kind of at the same time that our record company was kind of down. I kept the logo. I was like, well, how did you make yeah. that leap though? Cause obviously you mentioned you were always, Something I've always been in fitness. With you, I've, but, I've, yeah. I've always been in fitness. Well, I went to school. I, so coming to the U.S., I, I, my goal was to be Michael Jordan's trainer. Tim Grover is Michael Jordan's trainer, by the way. Um, That's a I didn't know goal. that. I, I didn't know that. And there's another gentleman named Chip as well that worked with him. But hey, you can't tell a 16 year old that's not possible. And uh, I was just fascinated. And by the time I went to college, um, I went to Whittier College, and uh, Chris Kamura, our strength and conditioning coach there. We worked, he basically told me at one point, like, hey, you want to be my guinea pig, right? He's working his, his CSCS. And he, by the time we were done with a four-month program, and I trained every day, I didn't go home, I stick, stuck around, we worked worked out twice a day, six, seven days a week. Uh, I ended up with a 42-inch vertical. I'm six foot one. I could put my elbow in the rim. Uh, I ran a four, three, four, four, forty. Uh, I was fast. I was explosive. And he did that. Like we did that. And I was like, mm -hmm. this is amazing. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. Like, wow. I actually put my mind to it. I had someone to guide me to that goal. And he helped me become a lot stronger, a lot more explosive, a lot faster. And that's when I was like, this is what I want to do. I went to school for uh, pre-physical you know, pre therapy and athletic training. I love that. But I didn't really see myself in khaki pants with a fanny pack, you know, at the sidelines for the rest of my life, um, which is not what they do, by the way. And, yeah. and shout out to every athletic trainer because you're overworked and underpaid today. I know that. 
uh, because five athletic trainers pretty ma- much make the exact equivalent of one physical therapist, which is wow. so unfair because wow. the athletic trainers keep everyone running. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's amazing what what these people do. Um, and then eh, by the time I graduated, didn't want to keep going with uh, with that. I'm not gonna lie, my GPA wasn't high enough, so I was like, I told my mom, I need a year off, and my mom was like, Oh, okay, and signed me up for chiropractic college. Yeah. Thanks, mom. Um, I went for like a half a year. I'm like, this isn't for me because in the back of my mind, I'm going, I'm going to be dealing with old people and car accident victims, right? Which is right? not true because all the people that I started with are like sports chiros and, you know, so. Um, you that realize there was a buffet. There was more on the menu than you thought. Yes. <laughs> and then I, my first job was at Gold's Gym on uh, Santa Monica and Cole in Southern California. Uh, Marcel Desir hired me day one. And it was funny enough. I used to be his athletic trainer and trainer in college, but he was a year ahead of me. So by the time I showed up, he just laughed. He grabs his shirt, throws <laughs> it at me. Um, I became the most disliked and liked person in the in the building on day one because he made me the highest paid trainer uh, on day one. Uh, so I didn't have to do the I didn't have to do the floor shift per se, which I did that later at New York sports clubs. Um, but that was a really cool experience. And then I stayed there for about a year, two years, moved into the the BMG building on Wilshire and worked with uh, a gentleman named Pete Love. He's a he's a A&R at, a, at Arista Records back in the day. Learned a whole lot about music there. So by the time I met my wife, who has a background in burlesque, uh, she is a burlesque uh, uh, star and future Hall of Famer. Very her, cool. Her mom's a burlesque Hall of Famer. And uh, fantastic what I learned from, you know, her mom in in... You know, the same way that my mo- my mother's in academia, her mother's a dropout, but traveled the you know the the U.S. and the world, um, you know, doing burlesque, and I learned so much. And funny enough, they, from a high school dropout perspective, and my mother in law who told me like, "Hey, you're only as good as your last act." And then my mother with a psychology background that says people are only going to remember you, you know, one or two ways: pleasure or pain. Are you going to be good or are you going to be crappy at what you do? And they're essentially saying the same thing. So it's kind of you know it's it's very helpful. So as as a fitness professional, yeah, I went into the music industry. Um, I never really let it go. You know, at, at the time we're doing that, I, I'm still training the uh, our kids' teams and, and I'm doing the strength and conditioning. And then by the time that it kind of was on its way out, that's when I went back to the New York Sports Club, got my floor shift in. This is what, nine years after I graduated and, uh, and, and grew there. But then after a certain point, I'm looking ahead, I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to hit the ceiling really, really fast. What can I, what else can I do? So, you know, she comes in with, uh, you know, something that Jenna Aniston was doing at the time. You should try this. And then next thing I know, I'm more into presenting and I'm, I got sucked in by, uh, one of my, my friends and my, one of my, my good friends and, and mentors, Bill Sonnemaker. Uh, he, he started writing me in as his co-presenter. He's like, dude, just show up. And the next thing I know I'm co-presenting. And the next thing I know he introduces me to like, you know, uh, Ryan Halverson at, at, uh, at idea in 2008. And uh, I got to do my first presentation. That's my own presentation. And that was such a gift. That was a gift. And that's when I understood, hey, coaches need coaches and mentors need mentors. And you always need to grow. You need to remain a student. And ever since then, I've you know I've been uh, able to help other people uh, move ahead. I'm, I'm always one of those people that I'll push everybody ahead because my, my, my mindset is if I push you out far ahead and you're younger, you have more potential than I do. So I, I'd like to be the 55 or 65 year old guy that just sits on the board like this and is like, what are you doing here? I'm just collecting and checking, yeah. giving everybody <laughs> my opinion, you know, but you have to earn that position. Yes. And so if I can help people move on uh, and move ahead, I, I, I've always done that. And it's, uh, yeah, some of it bites you in the ass and some of it doesn't, you know, and, 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 and I think often enough, if you just get a thank you, you know, sometimes you get it. It's, I don't need a you know fat check. I joke around with people if I get them a big job. I'm like, you know, dinner's not you next time I see you. Or yeah. I'm never paying for a drink as long as I know you. You know that, right? Yeah. And they just laugh and it's okay. But it's not like, oh, what? You're making 10 grand a month. I need 2,000 a right. month. Like, it's no, that, very that, honest. It's like, yeah. it's, it's genuine. It's genuine. You're connected yeah. to that ripple effect. So that's that's kind of like, you know, for, for me, the being in this industry and, and Hey, I've had the good fortune of working for some really big companies, you know, like I've worked with, you know, with Under Armour, with, with Life Fitness, with Trigger Point, with TRX, you know, it's, I've got a long list, but all those places that I've gone to are all relationship based. So for those people that are listening, build your network, you know, your network is your net worth, you know, the, the, the amount of money you make. And if you, if you're chasing money, you'll find that, 
you'll definitely find it. But you can find that too. Uh, what's that African proverb? If you want to travel fast, go alone. If you want to travel far, go together. You just summed that up so perfectly. I always end my podcast with a lasting nugget of wisdom and you just beautifully segue that I didn't even need to tee you. Honestly, Mark, I can't even tell you. I have so enjoyed this conversation. You really just have this wonderful presence, this wonderful energy. Honestly, you filled my cup. So I'm like, at the very least, you know, I really, really do appreciate that. Super cool story. I appreciate that. I think uh, I like. I'm, I'm, I'll finish you what you're finishing with 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 a, a thought. There's a book by Trevor Moawad, uh, and it's called uh, Getting to Neutral. And he talks about that the the positive mindset and thinking positive. That's not realistic. When you are put under pressure and under fire, you're going to revert back to who you really are, and that's your neutral. So he calls it getting to neutral. And I really love like after I read his book. Um, Scott Perry, a strength and conditioning coach, a former vice president for Exos, he, he recommended this book. And it was so valuable because after I read that, I was like, interesting, because we deal with a lot of athletes, still work with a whole bunch of fighters here, then Bellator and, and UFC and PFL. And um, and it's it's sharing that mindset, get to neutral, because if you are who you are, if you 100% at, at, at your core all the time, then you don't go, oh, I need to think positive because maybe I can pull this win out the bag. Like, no, think neutral. Think who you really are and all the work that you've put in to get to the point and place where you are. So I, I really appreciate it. And thank you know, thank you so much for, for you know having me on your podcast. Well, you added a lot of value to my day. So honestly, thank you. You've just listened to the All Things Fitness and Wellness podcast hosted by Chrissy Van. This episode was brought to you by Fitness World, your fitness, your way. Be sure to hit like and subscribe. We have new podcast episodes weekly featuring industry insiders and influencers. Together, we're on a mission for everyone to live a life fit and well.